suffer from motion sickness, Steve. I don't do well on boats. You'll be fine. <laughs> me putting on some lotion. I was a little ashy. Welcome to HQ Trivia. That's right. It's me. Twice in one day. Lucky you. Are you ready for some trivia? Huh? Thursday night. We in the spot. Don't believe me. Just watch. Woo! Ah, uh, yes. I love you all. Tomorrow is Friday. Be excited about it. Almost time to kick that weekend off right. I'm your host with the most. Holding it down from coast to coast. Smooth as the butter that you put on your toast. The one, the only, money flipping Matt Richards. AKA Matt was funny. Hit me up on the social medias. You know what I'm saying? All right. Who's ready to win some shmoney? If this is your first time joining us, allow me to explain how the game goes. You get 12 questions. They start out easy, but they get harder than... What's something difficult? Give me some ideas in the chat. They, they get hard, okay? The questions is going to start out easy, but then you're going to be like, what is happening? Yes, you got 10 seconds to tap the correct answer. You get all of them right. You and whoever's left is taking home a piece of that prize. That's right, tonight we got $5,000 up for the taking. $5,000! How much of that money will you be making? Okay, make sure you got extra lives, okay? To help you stay in the game. Use them wisely because you only get uh, you only get one per game to use. So make sure that you do what you do when you do it. All right, you get them by inviting your friends to play with your code or by playing HQ five days in a row. Yeah, it's a streak. Get your streak on. Also, the eraser, that's our new power-up. You get those, they eliminate one of the incorrect answers, giving you basically a 50-50 chance. Okay, you get those by uh, playing nearby two other HQDs. Okay? And they're free. It's free. It's a beautiful thing. To use one, you just tap the blue eraser button down there on the right. During the 10 seconds you have to pick the right answer, it will erase one of the two wrong answers, leaving you with two possible choices instead of three. Word. And like Extra Lives, you can only use one per game, just not on the final round. Okay, don't worry. You can still use your Extra Life after using the eraser, because they don't cancel each other out. All right. Guess who's coming back on Sunday? Huh? You guessed it. The 100. Woo! We will not stop asking questions until there are 100 or fewer players left. Those winners are going to split our $25,000 prize, which means a bunch of them are going to get a whole lot of money. Yeah, at least a bunch of money. All right, let's get some shout outs uh, percolating. Shout out to the LeJerk family. Shout out to all the fat bottom girls who make the HQ world go round. Nicole, who was left in the snow by Jim Davis. Jim, uh, William Brown and Brittany Brewer, they're engaged. The couple that HQs together last forever. Uh, shout out to the Tisser family. I see y'all. Getting your quiz on. Shandy and Marna. Marna introduced Shandy to HQ. So for that, Marna, I thank you. Uh, Aunt Diane and Uncle Kevin. Kev, you won Jeopardy, man. Let's see. Let's see what you got tonight, okay? Uh, Keely and her daddy, Garrett John. I see y'all. Also, I got to send a special shout out to uh, our girl here at HQ, Danielle, sitting on a plane right now. She's been on the plane for, for too many hours just waiting to take off but the snow we hope you have a safe flight baby go to canada have some fun eat some poutine for me and then get back here because we miss you all right y'all ready to start this game let's kick it off nothing to it but to hq it this is how we do it according to american tradition where did the pilgrims land in 1620 plymouth rock the alamo or in your dms <laughs> what's it gonna be well it took their descendants centuries to slide into DMs. The original pilgrims were all about that rock. Plymouth Rock, y'all. Yeah. 
320,596 of you got that one. Uh, 10,000 of you thought it was the Alamo. Y'all got to go back to school. Immediately. Question number two. Here we go. <laughs> I was trying to rhyme two with do. Won't have it again. Question two. What musical genre was Elvis Presley called the king of? Chip tune, rock and roll, or trap music? If he'd lived just a few more years, who knows what Elvis could have accomplished in the trap world. I would love for a duet with Elvis and the Migos. I think that would be fire. Hound dog! Hound dog! Hound dog! Whoop! Skirt! Thank you very much! Thank you very much! Uh, <laughs> he was the king of rock and roll. You ain't Duh. Dog, Look at him. Hey, with the stanky leg before the stanky leg was a thing. Rock and roll, babies. That's what Elvis Presley was the king of. 318,119 of you got that one. You're moving on to question numero tres. What is a key ingredient in traditional latkes? Chicken thighs, potatoes, or beets? What's it gonna be? Well, it ain't Hanukkah without a plate or two of latkes. And whether you add flour, egg, or onion, the base ingredient in these potato pancakes is potatoes. Yeah, I had a friend uh, named Jason that used to say potatoes with a B. And I said, well, you are but dumb. Uh, potatoes is the right answer. 283,446 of y'all knew that it was potatoes going in the lockers. You eat them up with some applesauce, a little sour cream. Shalom. Okay, question number four. Which show was the spinoff of the legal drama JAG? SVU, CSI, or NCIS? Love me some crime shows. Yes, I do. It's amazing how people still get caught for crimes with all these crime shows just giving away how to not get caught. Uh, something about crime and law that draws initials like a, like a letter magnet. SVU was just one spinoff of Law & Order, and Crime Scene Investigation was CSI, Duh, which launched its own spinoffs, but JAG led to Naval Criminal Investigative Service, NCIS, babies! Yeah, ooh, a couple of y'all got knocked out on that one, but 195,372 y'all, you knew what to do. So right now, get the extra life, quick, hurry! <laughs> Question number five. The shark fin that typically sticks out above the surface of the water is called what? Pectoral fin, dorsal fin, or ventral fin? Think about it. Shout out to uh, LL Cool J in the movie Deep Blue Sea for the soundtrack. Deepest blue is my hat is like a shark's fin. Deepest blue is my hat is like a shark's fin. I didn't get it for a while because you wear your hat like that. I was like, what? what kind of shark is that, Mr. Cool James? Okay, there's many, many, many fins on those sea creatures, but we're looking for the one on the shark's back. Yeah which is up top if he's oriented sensibly. So, we look to the Latin for back, which is dorsum, and bam, dorsal fin. Dorsal fin is the correct answer. 186,632 dorsal. Go online, find out how we can, there's uh, plenty of organizations that, uh, that take money to stop the, uh, the consumption of shark fin soup. Word. It just got serious. Okay, back to the game. In what decade were two Winter Olympics held two years apart? 70s, 80s, or 90s? What's it called? In the days of yore, the winter and summer games were held the same year. But then, out of the blue, skaters and bobsledders got what McDonald's would call bonus chances to win, playing both 92 and 94. Yeah! Woo! -hoo. First savage question of the day! Here we go! Savage question song! Sorry you got it wrong! Savage question song! That's a savage question song! Savage question! Savage question! Hey! Alright! Sorry that you got it wrong, but if you got extra lives and you didn't use them already. Yeah, there you go. What? This is question seven. Ready? Here we go. 
What 80s arcade game was controlled with handlebars built into the cabinet? Excite Bike, Paperboy, or Dirt Fox? 80s arcade game had the handlebars right there. You put your quarters in, you hold on to the handlebars, you get your steer on. Oh, how sneaky we get. Dirt Fox only released in Japan. That was a car racing game controlled by a steering wheel. And Excite Bike debuted on the NES. Never an arcade game. But Arcade Paperboy was played with your fists in the three and six positions. Word. Right here, like this. Like a bicycle. Paperboy, y'all. 40,150 making deliveries all throughout the neighborhood. Question number eight. Hope you're feeling great. Which U.S. president was, at one time, the biggest whiskey producer in the United States? Teddy Roosevelt, George Washington, or Ulysses S. Grant? The biggest whiskey producer in the U.S. Okay, this guy once made 11,000 gallons of whiskey in one year. That's more than any other American that year. Yeah. <laughs> well, the year was 1799. The guy... George Party Time Washington. Yeah, that's what I call him. 17,148 of y'all knew that uh, George Washington was uh, making whiskey. Word. Okay, question number nine. Here we go. Which city gets its name from a wild relative of the onion? Chicago, Fargo, or Milwaukee? This is easy to remember if you're a fan of The Onion, America's finest news source. After originating in Madison, Wisconsin, they spent a good decade in New York before finding a linguistically perfect home, sweet, sweet Chicago. Yeah, 11,068 of y'all. We're blowing through this game. 11,068 of you are moving on to question number 10, my friends. Let's go. What? Must a Major League Baseball player be to hit a walk-off home run right-handed on the home team or a pinch hitter? Think about it. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go step by step. A walk-off run ends the game. That can't happen at the top of the inning because the team that's down would get to bat. And the way games are structured, the bottom of the inning is when the home team bats. So it'd have to be on the home team. Yeah, a lot of y'all got that one right. 11,216 of y'all. Moving on to question 11. All dogs go to heaven. Here we go. The 20th Century Fox Fanfare was written by the uncle of the composer of what Oscar-winning song? We belong together, let it go, or my heart will go on. Everybody knows 20th Century Fox. That was a... Uh, yeah, okay. For decades, Star Wars movies couldn't start until you heard this bombastic fanfare of Hollywood's Golden Age. Okay? It may even be better known than the We Belong Together, which would kind of make Randy Newman less accomplished than his uncle Alfred. We belong together, y'all. We belong. Yeah, listen to it. <laughs> I don't know where the song started specifically, but you know what I'm talking about. There it was. Yeah. We belong together was the right answer there. That's another Savage Question. Woo! Savage Question song. Sorry you got it wrong. Savage Question song. We belong together was the right answer. That's the one by Randy Newman who's in Toy Story. Cool. Not the Mariah Carey one. Yeah. 3,428 of you are moving on to question 12. Question 12! What's that smell? Smells like money! Follow me, I got my money! Woo! Question 12! I said question 12! Okay, here we go! Get out all the willies. Which of these product mascots was not a real person? Betty Crocker, Captain Morgan, or Orville Redenbacher? Let y'all. Figure this one out without a doubt. Okay. Brand mascots. The most delicious people of all. Henry Morgan was a pirate arrested by Charles II and later knighted by him. 
And the 80s were full of appearances by Indiana's own Orville Redenbacher. But Betty Crocker, <laughs> she wasn't real. Yeah, Betty Crocker's the right answer. We got 2,295 winners of HQ Trivia! Whoa! Yeah. Congratulations to all of the winners. Win in the game. Discord 75. You got two dollars and some change. Lead Ledu Priest. Congratulations. Psychori. Joey B. Look at that puppy smiling. Emerald Lynn. Congratulations. Oh, Jeebus. <laughs> cool. You got some money. Aztec for life. And Ringtail Lemur. Yeah. 2,295 winners. What do you think about that, Winnie? Huh? You think that's good? Yeah? When he's like, hey, y'all. I'm proud of you. Oh, the sleepy baby. She's so sleepy. Thank you guys so much for playing HQ Trivia. For 25 cents a day. You have a quarter. Come back tomorrow at 9 p.m. for your chance at another $5,000. And then, this Sunday, the 100. Ooh, yeah. She's ready to go to bed. Until next time, I've been your host, Matt Richards. Ciao.